Okay, right, so I'm going to try to break this up into chunks so that you do one thing and get that all done. And so just watch the recording to that spot, and then I'll make it really clear when you are going to go to a different activity. First thing I'm going to have you do is actually go to that PLTW project lead the way P at PTLW page and start there, okay? And hopefully this all makes sense. Let me know. And the first thing you're going to do is I want you to take a look at that energy page. It looks like this right here. And this is basically a story. So you are going to read through this story. And so as you're reading through it, you're going to pay attention to the questions that are being asked and the problem that's being presented. And just read through it. Enjoy it. Then at the bottom of this, there is a question and it says, can you help the three friends follow the engineering design process to solve the problem and answer Milo's question about where to start? So then the other thing that I want you to do while you're reading each of these pages is you're going to see words that are highlighted. Like I'm reading here, the demonstration of the egg breaking as it collided with a wall or other solid object at the end of the ramp may have raised some questions. But if you look, if you click on the word collided, it will give you the definition of the word. What I want you to do in your notebook is to write every single word that has a hyperlink to it. That's in this case, it's highlighted in green and then write down the definition. OK, because those are the terms that you're supposed to learn as you're going through this information. So there's collision, there's energy. Those are the two that are the ones on this page. And then keep reading on through here. And then at the very bottom, there are some questions. They're called conclusion questions. And I want you to write those conclusion questions, the answer to those conclusion questions, in your notebook. After you've done one page, like this would be the first page, because it says number one at the top, or says energy activity one, Take your notebook to your mom, have her check off on that, and then go to the next page. Okay, then do the one for activity number two. You're going to, again, write down all the vocabulary words, potential energy, kinetic energy. Even if you think you know what the words are, write it down anyway. And then just read through what they're having you do. Okay, then do all of those pages. So you're going to do, um, go back to the home page. You're going to do activity three. You're going to read the project. You're going to read the problem. OK, now I don't know exactly which engineering design process diagram Mrs. O'Shea is using, but it's going to look a lot like one of these. So let me just get this one up here for us. So the engineering design process has a couple of steps to it. In this case, there's five different steps. And we're going to start at the top. We're going to ask ourselves a question. So what is the problem? And then it says define constraints. Constraints are those things that limit our ability to do anything we want. Maybe the constraint is the size. We have to build a solution to a problem and we're restricted by size. Maybe we're restricted by money. Maybe we're restric restricted by materials. Maybe temperature or light are factors that we have to consider. So one of the things that we have to think about when we're designing an engineering solution are the constraints. So we're going to start off with number one, asking a question and asking what the problem is. Number two, we're going to imagine. We're going to brainstorm. We're going to think about a solution. Just like you and I did when we were building your snake cage, I had you think through what does this look like in your mind? The next thing I had you do was draw it out. Remember that? And so that's what the next one is. You're going to plan it. You're going to draw it. You're going to make a list of materials. And then the next thing you did with your snake cage was create it. Remember I had you actually make a little design out of straws first and that's part of the planning and creating. And then we took the straw structure that you built and we improved upon it. We made it better. And then we actually made the snake cage out of wood. So that's the design process. We use this same process whenever we're solving an engineering problem. So as you're reading through, let me go back to that page. <clears throat> 
As you're reading through all of the pages here on this website, keep that in mind and ask yourself, where am I in the design process? Another activity you can do is this. It's also a collision activity. You can do both of these. Get a pan or a little container and put a little bit of water in the bottom of it and add maybe two or three drops of soap and then real gently stir the water with the soap in it. You don't want suds. You just want the water to be able to stick to whatever we're going to put in here. I'll show you in a minute. Then put some food coloring in there, blue, red, green, whatever you want. So now you've got this solution. It's soapy and you've got um, it's colored. Go get some marbles, maybe some tennis, well, tennis balls won't be very good. Golf balls work. I've got a ping pong ball. And you're going to put it in here and just going to roll it around. What you want to do is get all of that colored water and soap solution on the marble and on whatever ball you've got. Then what you would have done first is put a whole bunch of pieces of paper down on the table. You might want to tape them on the back because you want a big space. And then you're going to take two of those marbles and just roll them into each other along the paper. And what you're going to see is they're going to leave a track of color and then they're going to run into each other and that's called a, you better have said collision. So they hit each other and then they're going to go off. And you can see the tracks at their left. And if you pushed one harder than another, that might have more energy in it because it's moving faster. And then you can tell by the track that's left which marble had more energy and which one had less energy. After you've read through all these activities, you're going to learn about transfer of energy and things like that. If you've got marbles that are two different sizes, you can do the same thing. Roll different size marbles towards each other and see what happens when they collide. Okay? Then, once you've done that and you understand collision, then you can go back and you can build this car, put an egg on it. You're going to have to figure out a way to make that work. Protect the egg somehow and then roll the car down a ramp into a wall and see if you can create a solution to keep that egg from being broken. That's what the kids in your class did and you were not able to do that. So there you go. Then the very, very final thing that you're going to do is you are going to write up what this whole thing looks like. And let me see if I can get to that spot. Okay. And this is the guide for that writing. So you're going to read all the directions here. And what you're going to do is you are going to have, I think there's three or four, there's like four different parts to your paper that you're going to write. The first one is the introduction, what they call a hook paragraph. And there's an example of what that looks like. And what you're going to do is you're going to, like any story that you read, you want to capture the reader's attention and want, give them a reason to want to read your story about either the marbles colliding or the car bumping into the wall and trying to keep your egg from cracking. So you're going to write an introductory paragraph. And there's a place on the right-hand side of this worksheet for you to just put some notes, start to write that paragraph. Then the next part of it is um, you write another three or more paragraphs. And you're going to tell the beginning, the middle, and the end of your work. What did you do? How did you build your car? What did you do with the marbles? Whichever one you're going to do, okay? And you are going to remember it's organized well, and you can read the directions for that. There's a transition. In other words, how do you move from one thought to another thought? And then you might want to tell a little bit more about the story. And then the very, very last paragraph um, is called a conclusion. And you're going to write an ending to the story about either the marbles colliding or the car crashing. And that's where you are going to um, bring the whole story to a close. Okay, spelling's important, and that's on there too. So that's the assignment that Mrs. O'Shea wants you to work on. Then she's given you some examples of what that looks like. They're called personal narratives. And there are four different categories. There's one that's below basic. In other words, that's below the, the, the main standard. 
And there's an example of that right here. There's one that's just basic, and that there's an example of that. Then there's one that's proficient, which means it's um, better than the basic one. And then there's one that's advanced. That's a really, really, really good piece of writing. So what you're aiming to do is to write a story like the advanced one. And you can use this as an example. And so you can see how they did this. And you would just kind of use those ideas and then put your own words in and tell your own story. That's what you need to do. Okay? So hopefully that helps. And I love you. Call me. Let me know if you have questions. Okay? Okay, so the writing project or the writing activity only has to be one of the collision activities that you did. The rest of your class is doing the car because that's what they did together. So you can either do the car or you can do the marbles. It doesn't matter. I've talked to Mrs. O'Shea and she will take either one of those. Now before you turn in your writing, I'd like to see it because I can give you some hints maybe about what you might want to say differently or I'll just you know, tell you you've done a good job or whatever it is. So let me know if you have questions and take care. Love you. Bye.